Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome very, very much to Conversations, where I'm pleased to welcome to the program two gentlemen that are co-authoring and working now on a book called The Bush Dilemma. I'd like to introduce the guests, get into the conversation, and see where their researches are taking them. And if I may, on my far left is uh, Warren Hinkle, who uh, was the uh, uh, editor of Ramparts, is still editor now at uh, the Inquirer, I guess, in San Francisco currently. Inquirer? I mean, I mean the, the, uh, the San Francisco I'm, Examiner. Examiner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It couldn't be hardly further from the truth. The, uh, an eagle yes, indeed. But in any event, welcome very, very much, Walter Hinkle. And on my immediate left is Emil D'Antonio, who is the documentary maker. And Emil or D, welcome very, very much to Conversations. Maybe, D, you've been a guest here on Conversations before. You might kick it off here. The Bush Dilemma in the book. What is it you're, what is the, what is the book uh, uh, envisioned, and what are you, what's going to come out in the book? Well, in all honesty, the publisher planted the title on us. Uh -huh. But uh, nonetheless, I think that Warren and I are both happy with the title because it presents us a, st a starting place. Uh, I don't think either, neither Warren or myself has ever been given to uh, any theories of objectivity, mm -hmm. uh, although I think we're interested in truth. Mm -hmm. We're interested in a book, basically, that's going to be anarchistic, mm -hmm. funny, and uh, which will, I think, systematically take apart the career of George Bush piece by piece. Really? Yeah. And we're going to have some, we're going to have some things come out in the book that... Uh the citizenry perhaps are going to find uh, surprising or that they're not uh, accustomed to the view that Mr. Bush has been able to present of himself? Well, the starting point uh, of this book is that an extraordinary amount of information came out about George Bush uh, during last year's presidential campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, it came out in the independent press, in the underground press, in the left press, from independent researchers, uh, it came out in congressional hearings, it came out in various federal reports. I mean, it came out a, sort of across the board on, around the country in various areas. But that information never made, never made in any area the so-called mainstream media. And mm. there's two questions about that. One is, why in blazes the Dukakis campaign when there was material that on the face of it you would think would be damaging to Bush? Just to take one example. George Bush, as vice president, was head of the uh, anti-drug task force. That's right. That's an elaborate name. That's right. He was head of that since about 1982. So for a considerable period of years, he had charge of stopping the flow of drugs into the United States. Uh, he had broad powers for a vice president. He was given to him. He, was, he could coordinate the Coast Guard and the DEA and the Customs and the FBI and the CIA and the interdict drugs and do all these things. Well, during that period, the amount of cocaine uh, translated in street terms to crack, which is plaguing uh, every metropolitan area in the United States, particularly in New York. Yeah, the crack it, is a form of cocaine, I guess, right? Yeah, well, cocaine yeah. became so cheap yeah, okay. uh, that kids could afford to burn it and uh -huh. take it. That, that's... So what's happened in the streets. Uh -huh. But during Bush's period of stopping drugs coming into the United States, yeah. and he had full charge of that, the amount of cocaine increased three times its metric tonnage. Wow. Some incredible figure, like 26 million net metric tons. So he did a bad job at an impossible task? or no? Well, either he uh -huh. was an incompetent, uh, which would have been interesting, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, there were political considerations in letting drugs into the United States. One political consideration was the Central Intelligence Agency's policies of dealing uh, cooperatively, what would be at the Mafia or be at some uh, uh, Southeast Asian group or some Turkish group, whatever you want to call it, uh, if it was to our political advantage or to the political advantage they saw, to let them carry out their drug policies. That's been fairly well established in histories of the drug politics from the... 50s and the 60s onward. And more uh, important mm -hmm. is on yeah. the, in the 80s themselves uh -huh. when the Guns for Drugs program began in regard to Nicaragua. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, it was then uh, that the Drug Enforcement Agency, the CIA, all under the direction of Bush, started to move huge quantities, more, greater quantities of drugs into the United States so that they could be sold in the streets and the money would be turned into guns 
and sent back to the, to the Contras. Now, that can be documented that the CIA or American agencies were under their auspices or under their, with their full knowledge that the drugs were being brought into the United Absolutely. States? Absolutely. Other than a rumor. I mean, there are the smoking gun evidence that we need to substantiate that charge. That's the name of our corporation, by the way, Smoking, smoking Gun Inc. Is it truly? Yeah. Smoking, smoking Gun Inc. Well, we are Smoking Gun. Smoking Gun is here to tell you. Well, because these things were allegated in the, in the, in the contra hearings with Mr. North and so forth, there were allegations. Well, no. They, they, they Rodriguez weren't, and so no, forth. They, they weren't really allegations. What okay. happened in the Iran-Contra hearings was that Bush got a pass. Um, the question of the vice president's office involvement in arming the Contras and drugs being shipped back and forth for guns was sort of vaguely raised and ducked by the entire panel. There wasn't a question asked by a member of that panel, by be it from the Senate side or the, or the not even in those executive or sessions. The House side. In the executive sessions, they were raised. They never came out in public. Uh, they weren't part of the staff work, and they weren't part of the Iran Contra hearings nor of their final report. Bush was asked by the committee staff in writing, uh, were you involved in arming the Contras out of the vice president's office and in trading drugs for guns? And he answered, no, I was not. Out of the loop. And they said, thank you very much, sir, uh -huh. on to the next issue. He got a complete pass from that. Why? Well, one might say uh, respect for the vice presidency. One might say respect for the presidency. Uh, a lot of critics of that committee think that the president of the United States got it pretty large pass mm -hmm. out of that. Regardless, there was a great reluctance on the part of that committee to go any further than it had to, as there was in the Tower Report, the so-called uh, investigation headed by the current or to be uh, Secretary of Defense, mm -hmm. uh, former Senator Tower, uh, who after all was uh, a person uh, uniquely involved in uh, anti-communist politics and CIA politics and uh, a lot of aid for the Contras himself. But he also gave everybody a whitewash. And Bush clearly was not to be dealt with in this thing. So that what that left you with was uh, some independent journalists who looked into this, uh, a lawsuit by the Christig Institute in Washington, which is a group of uh, not-for-profit Catholics and other religious types who think that immoral things like drugs should be brought in the United States for political purposes. Well, if it could be proven, it would be a... Uh well, uh, you have something Damaging, else. Damaging, to say the least. Yeah. You also have the hearings uh, now still, uh, they're now finished uh, by Senator Kerry uh -huh. of uh -huh. Massachusetts. Yes. And there you have very precise documentation of massive amounts of material going either way. Say to the farm of John Hull. Uh-huh. In Costa Rica. In Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, John Hull didn't seem to exist. And the papers aren't picking up on it. Mm -hmm. uh, TV isn't picking up on it. These hearings uh, were televised uh, on channel uh, on, on the C-SPAN channel. Yes. It had the smallest uh, viewership of anything in the history Ter of this country. Terry's hearings, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. And they were extraordinary hearings because you had a man like uh, Milan Rodriguez who dealt hundreds of millions of dollars worth of cocaine back and forth money for the Contras, cocaine for us, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars uh, by his own admission. You have American pilots, you had, ex you had people who were recruited by the CIA to fly uh, guns down, drugs back to keep the thing going. All of this was uh, documented Sometimes Kerry was the only senator in the hearing. Uh -huh. Other times he was joined by D'Amato. Uh -huh. And once in a while by a third figure. Yeah. But on the whole, it was, a, it was something that I don't think the government wanted the American people to see or hear. Well, I can understand where they wouldn't. And it's going to be a, a, a substantial part of our book. Uh -huh. the, the, this, this question of that. They would say, or they might say, that these things were going on they were out of the loop at the top end of the executive branch of the government. They well, didn't have responsibility. there's no doubt that the president of the United States was out of the loop from before the time he was elected. Well, I mean, uh, as far as charges that could be brought against the top of the executive branch for having been knowledgeably involved with smuggling drugs into this country, that's not been able to be proven, or has it? Or well, the, the vice president. In the president. case of the vice president's office, uh, it's been largely, largely proven. Since the Iran-Contra committee ducked it, most of the evidentiary evidence has come in the private lawsuit brought by the Christig Institute. Uh -huh. 
Uh, and in there, for instance, they took the depositions of the two top lieutenants in Bush's office, uh, Donald Gregg, uh, a former major CIA guy who's now Bush's reappointing to South Korea to have the CIA station there, and a, a colonel named Watson, another guy with a long history of intelligence work. And there's no question when you read their answers in court that they were intimately involved in finding the airstrips, uh, the quantities of supplies. Uh, just as, a, as an example, when the famous cargo plane crashed, the Hassenfoss cargo plane that yeah. started the whole mess that right. revealed this. Yeah, thing. I remember, yeah. The first call that was made about that plane Greg crashing. Greg Fuller. Yeah. Uh, huh? was, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. The first call that came from Central America to say this plane crashed didn't go to the CIA, didn't go to the White House, didn't go anywhere you might imagine. It went to Vice President Bush's office, office. Yeah, because right. that plane and that crew was being run out of the Vice President's office. Well, that, office. that came out at the time of the Hassan Force uh, Absolutely. incident, and uh, that's just one piece. Is that but it was seen dropped as right circumstantial there. evidence? Is that seen as circumstantial? No, it fits in the entire pattern of this thing being run out of the Vice President's office. It was dropped, as Dee says, but the amazing question is, you can see why the press in this country, which has been relatively gutless, and is certainly not too willing to take on a Republican candidate and more likely a winning Republican candidate. Republicans have been pretty rough on the press in this country. They uh, beat them up pretty well when Nixon was president. The mm -hmm. press has been kind of scared ever since. Uh, but they, not only did the press not want to touch this thing, but the question is why wouldn't the Dukakis campaign want to touch this? What is now, your thought? Why not? Well, the opposition in that sense who could benefit from uh, from uh, revealing such well, a thing. Well, cocaine, I mean, Bush's role of misfeasance or nonfeasance as the anti-drug operator is but one question about his whole role, but just taking that one, now the, the caucus campaign people, and we've asked them this, they said, well, we felt that that was an issue that the press should bring up. And when the press brought it up, we were ready to jump into it. And then you talk to people on the Washington Post and the New York Times, and they say, well, you know, we knew all about that. It was floating all around. And if the caucus had made an issue of it and given a big speech about it and jumped into it and really attacked Bush, well, then we would have got into it, you know? So it's like a complete Chicken circle. Egg, huh? One side Chicken. blames the other. Yeah. It's, it's, well, uh, this is far away from drugs, and I'm not sure how much I approve of it. But nonetheless, in Los Angeles, the LA Weekly, which is a paper that's on the way up, it's a very substantial financially successful paper that's an imitation of the Village Voice. Uh -huh. It doesn't have the circulation of the voice yet, but it, when Bush uh, made one of his visits to L.A. during the campaign, the L.A. Weekly had a front page story with a picture of a woman that Bush was supposed to be having an affair with. Now all the press was coming in, the New York Times, the AP, the UP, everybody was coming in. No one picked up on that story. Well, it was briefly, there was a little blip or something. There. But a blip, a blip yeah. that passed by, bimp, like that. Yeah. Nobody picked up on the story to say, this is a lie. Nobody did the research on it. Nobody said, yes, this is true. It disappeared. Well, one got the impression it wasn't true. It was a rumor that wasn't true, and it went away, you know, because there are always these kind of rumors and mudslinging and things well, that go on. Well, it seemed more like what Warren was talking about and what we both feel. I mean, I think that what Warren was laying was almost the chicken and the egg thing. Yeah. When asked... When the Dukakis campaign, people were asked, why the hell didn't you pick up some of this? Yeah. They said, we're waiting for the press. And the press almost implied some of the press people, we were waiting for the Dukakis people to do it, so it would be a story. So nobody did it. Well, and this wasn't true of yeah. the woman alone. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was true of every single issue. Uh -huh. Well, the fact of the matter is that, you know, the what about staked Horton? out Gary Hart. Yeah. Well, they didn't stake out George Bush. Well, maybe they staked him out and nothing came of it or something. You know, one got the impression nothing came of it, that he happened not, you know, that kind of thing goes on. You know, no, the, but look at the way they, they stomped on it. Hart. Yeah, well, they wiped him out. He was finished. Well, yeah, but maybe he did something that was uh, observable and so forth, and Mr. Bush didn't. Oh, you know? no, it's I mean, common. I mean, there's I mean, rumors that you I, know, I don't. You think got, that, you got to separate rumors. I don't think uh, that anybody's particularly in a political sex life group. is a, is of an issue whether they should be president or not. Yeah. yeah. But it's common knowledge. I mean, absolute common knowledge of Washington, including in the Washington press corps, uh, that Bush has been a player around guy. Uh, oh, well, that I, one woman has been intimately linked with him, has been on his staff for the last 18 years, and that there are other instances, including a shooting incident involving the wife of a congressman uh -huh. in 1981, where the records were ripped out of the Metropolitan Police Station files, and the Washington Post finally had to do a story saying, all these rumors fly around Washington and leave out the name of the husband involved, yeah. the wife involved. 
But, you know, that's not such a point. person it's staggered. Just, there's a different criteria. Yes, I don't know anything about any of that. The, I live in New York. I'm not for the randy or random sex life of a Republican presidential candidate than for that of a Democratic presidential candidate. I mean, I, I myself think that the uh, invasion of Gary Hart's private life was a disgrace on the part of the press. I thought it was a terrible story. I thought it never should have been done. I think it's taken journalism down a rat hole, and it's going fast down anyway. But that's just a personal opinion. Mm -hmm. But as long as the press is going to do that, I think you've got to have you know sort of equal mud tide. Mm -hmm. And clearly, for Bush, there was a different standard. Yeah, well, I don't this know. This was true during the whole Yeah, like I said, they've covered it well, because I had never gotten uh, personally here in New York a hint of that that you say is so well known in Washington. So well, I hadn't gotten a hint of that. But back to the thing about what the drug What they've covered thing. up that's it's more important, though, is where we were. I mean, the people who are running the guns and drugs campaign yeah. are all Bush people from the time he was a CIA, the director of the CIA. Mm -hmm. A man named Rodriguez, yeah. Greg himself. <laughs> I don't mean the, the, there are many Rodriguez's in this. Greg Fuller was involved? Not Greg Fuller, oh. uh, Donald Gregg. Oh, Don oh, okay, sorry. Donald yeah, Gregg, sorry, yeah. Rodriguez, any number of both Latin Central American people who were in the CIA and U.S. people in the CIA were also involved in the drugs and guns traffic. Well, they ran it. Hull is an old CIA hand. He yeah. was planted down there in, in right. Costa Rica. But the thrust of the Contra hearings was, in a certain sense, you had this loose cannon, Mr. North, who took a lot of things onto himself, Mr. Poindexter, that had stopped there, and that the top echelons of government weren't involved in that, and in a well, certain I sense... Well, but that's the traditional you know, that's government the, response. That's the traditional government response. That's more the or less, of the secret government. But that's more or less where things stand now in terms of the public consciousness. They've more or less accepted that sort of thing. And you're well, saying you know, that... Yeah, but why during a presidential year uh -huh. should the investigative press, the normally so-called alert press, and the opposition, the political opposition, the Democratic Party, why they should let something sit that clearly involved the vice president's office in all kinds of evidentiary ways, so a congressional committee ducked it. I mean, so a big investigation ducked it. What's that mean when you're talking about who's going to be president? Well, suppose they did investigate these things and they find out that the, story, the, the position that Mr. Reagan and the position that Mr. Bush took was essentially the truth, and so there's no story there and it goes away. Well, nobody, that, uh, Mr. there's North not a soul in Washington believes that, including the staffs on both sides no. of the uh -huh. those committees. So then in order for somebody to run that down, uh, that rumor and defined evidential, uh, you know, uh, that could clearly link them, the smoking gun, as you say, that has not yet been able to be produced in That's terms what of we're doing. Now, do you have something that we're you're going to put to in the, the book the work that, that, that hasn't... should have done last year. Well, I'm trying to say, you've got some sort of things you're coming up with that hasn't come out in the process of that investigation that would link Mr. Bush to these things or something, and you'll bring these out in the book, and if so, what things have you come up with that haven't some come out Some of it is out in the, in the general the public right now. Oh, okay. In the okay. Kerry report. I okay. mean, you can, you can write right now to Senator Kerry and get the volumes of his report. That is, a, Those are public documents. And again, the papers never picked up on them. Mm -hmm. To me, the most offensive thing about what's happened in this country since the day of Reagan and that takes, subsumes the idea of Bush is the destruction of language. Mm -hmm. we, we, the way North, Reagan, Bush refer to the resistance. The resistance is a word that has a long history. Mm -hmm. And it has a history of being on the left. Mm -hmm. It was the, the resistance, fighters. the freedom fighters, mm -hmm. the resistance, the people against Hitler. Mm -hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. Suddenly, the freedom fighters are the thugs of Somoza, yeah. are professional soldiers, or else very young people who don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They're not motivated by ideals, mm -hmm. and they're not motivated. What, uh, uh, what did Somoza stand for? Uh, th there's a combination here of destruction of language, of, of omission of facts, of the press seem seeming to be afraid. And as Warren said, in the campaign itself, the Democratic Party was afraid, mm -hmm. or else Dukakis was, was blackmailable, or else he was very badly advised. But there was something highly abnormal in his campaign, because he knew from the polls that he was losing. Uh -huh. And he knew that there were issues that he was aware of, which he could have used against Bush, and he never used them. Well, maybe he had a sense of, again, I don't want to, you know, uh, you say this common knowledge and this sort of thing, he had a sense of, I don't want to use a sense of integrity or something like that, but something that he said, unless there's absolutely clear smoking gun evidence that this is the case, I don't want to make allegations that are based upon rumors and uh, particularly in a political context where one tries to well, that, uh, all, that would all throw automatically mud disqualify him from being president anyway. Well, perhaps. That's an 
a politician. But you understand what I'm saying? No, but you understand what I'm saying is that uh, is the thing is that there's a you know that they say we've been through that and we went through that thing. There, you know, there's still people on the Warren Commission report on the assassination of President Kennedy, many other things that they feel are there have been whitewashes and so forth. But have the thing the things that have come out in the press, such as there are that have been made public knowledge, is there sufficient material there if it were called and put together and presented right that would bring culpability? Uh, to the feet of Mr. Bush in a serious way, or well, what would, would be the result of this? To uh, Mr. Bush uh, as a vice president, and would also bring impeachment to him as a president. Where within the, the within this before the Senate, within the information that has been public, either through Senate hearings and so forth, there is information that is enough to re consider bills of impeachment against Mr. Bush. More, that, more that than without one, information one, that has not yet been made public, in your estimation, made but, public. But most of the information that's been so-called made public has not been dealt with by the New York Times. The Washington Post, the Kansas City Star, the Chicago Tribune, all this material was just, they didn't want to touch that. One they would only touch what bubbled to the very surface and then it went down right away. Mm -hmm. One simple fact yeah. is that the Reagan administration ran against drugs from just saying no on the part of Mrs. Reagan to all the statements put out by the White House and the Vice President. And all of the time that was happening, we were bring, they were bringing in drugs in amounts which are absolutely yeah, in the see, billions. It's the yeah. only way that you can account for the rise in the use of cocaine and crack between 1980 and 1988. Well, why couldn't just normal market forces do that, and people are just smuggling well, drugs in because there's a market? Normal the market, market forces without the belong government to Adam involved. Smith in the 18th century. Well, you know, normal I mean. market forces are in themselves abnormal forces. Huh. They're forces of manipulation. They're forces of greed. They're forces of capital attracting. X, Y, and Z. But there's a lot and of the individuals drug world, making well, money by smuggling the drugs. The history of, of drugs in the United States goes to that in the 60s there was a heroin explosion. And the heroin explosion was largely tied to the Vietnam War. Yeah, the Golden uh, Triangle. You guys got yeah. hooked, a lot of people got brought CIA in. CIA operation. Yes, it, I understand. It, it's not so much an argument of history anymore that because of the CIA's tolerance and needed this warlord to deal with and Air America pilots got a little thing on the side because they could bring, bring some drugs in out. Uh, that's been fairly well established that one of the reasons or perhaps a major contributing reason for the heroin explosion in the United States in the 60s had to do with the United States tolerance on the part of the CIA telling customs and things like that to allow heroin into the United States for political reasons. Mm -hmm. Very controversial statement, but sort of calmly established in a number of books. Nobody even wants to bring it up. John Stockwell nasty wrote on that, I think, or he has. Stockwell mentioned that, and yeah. there's the basic book. McCoy's Allen Ginsberg book, run that. McCoy's book. On, on the politics of heroin in Southeast Asia. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of academic studies and serious books that, you know, if you talk to a C, even a basic CIA guy, I'd say, yeah, that was kind of bad what we did then. Okay, but let's leave that argument aside for the minute. One can make the same sort of argument, and I think present the same sort of proof, that the reason in the 1980s that there was a cocaine, in our terms, city terms, a crack explosion in the United States, mm -hmm. was that, again, the floodgates were unleashed. And the only reason that gates get unleashed like that is that either the nation that produces it has got a pass from the United States for one reason or the other, usually that's a political reason, or that the nation that's accepting it, the United States, isn't watching its borders. And in the case of the Contras, well, yeah. I mean, there's been constant allegations in the Senate hearings. There have been enough people put in jail that said, look, we got the permission to see, hey, what is this thing? We were bringing it in. We gave the things. They gave us the arms. We took the drugs. And that stuff was going on at a massive level. And that was ducked. That was ducked by the yeah. Iran-Contra committee. And it was ducked by the press because they didn't want to take on the Republican candidate. Well, there are young men who were making literally millions of dollars on a trip, mm -hmm. on one trip. There's one tale in the Kerry Committee which staggers me. I used to be a flyer once. It re a guy comes in uh, with a DC-6 mm. loaded with cocaine. And, he's, and he says, That's What's a big craft. Big, big four-engine airplane. Yeah. What, where am I going to land? They said, Homestead Air Base. Homestead Florida. Air Base, the United States now, Army. Who said that? Who said that? Yeah. The CIA man. Right. So he... His signal is a whistle at a certain altitude and a certain fixed position. The whistle comes back from the tower. No words are used. That means you're, you're clear to land. When he lands, just as in the old Air Force days, 
there's a truck along the runway that says, follow me. It has those big lights yeah. on it, follow me. His, his plane follows the truck. He steps out, they tell him where to go, and the, the, they take care of the product, the, of, the, of the cargo. And this they being government? They, uh, they, they you CIA have to assume, operation? is at least somebody connected with the government, the CIA. Uh -huh. he, the pilot doesn't want to know. He just wants his money and to get out. Right. Yeah, right. And but to land in an Air Force base when the Vice President <coughs> of the United States is running the anti-drug program, that alone would, would, I think, constitute the beginning of papers of impeachment. Well, it might be, but, but, but it could be somebody, he's running the, uh, the organization, but there are fellows down below who are breaking the rules in order to make some money, and uh, that he didn't know about it, and there were people that who were doing things on Air their Force own. And isn't very, that more or less the point they were trying to make? Very possibly. George Bush may be Didn't know innocent. anything about it. There were guys just making money on the side. He may be innocent. But the, the, question, the question the here is, why didn't the press, why didn't the Dukakis campaign, why didn't the public at large know that there was this major question about him at least being incompetent? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe he was totally innocent. But if he was completely innocent, he was so incompetent that you wouldn't want to elect him to uh, the sewer commission. Well, those things yeah. did come up, but they came up not very directly. They, they came didn't. up on the side. He made Mr. Dawkins, the caucus, made uh, Little some references to his... Hardly uh, no. He made no. one speech in Kansas out. City about it. His yeah. staff yanked him. They advised him that the polls they took... Mm -hmm. That's why the caucus campaign was so excellently technocratic. Uh -huh. The mm -hmm. polls that they took early showed that the issues to, to go at were lifestyle, a comparity of wages, issues like that. Uh -huh. And they couldn't break themselves loose of their own rigidity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to go at issues that go to the core of American concern. I mean, you know, anybody, I think, would say that the issue of crack, why we have that problem, why we have this incredible burst of crime, violence, random violence in our streets because of crack, mm -hmm. that's a darn involving issue. People yeah, well, like to know about Yeah, that. people are very, very much involved in that, but it's another thing to say. I mean, bills of impeachment is a very serious thing. I mean, it's not something that comes up We're lightly or easily. We're not saying it lightly. Uh, no, We're I'm not, not saying oh, no, it What I was saying is that there's, there's ample evidence for that, but, I mean, this may sound extraordinary. I don't think it's so extraordinary in view of the classic stupidity to the caucus campaign. It's extraordinary that they didn't bring up issues about Bush. We're, we're centering on this cocaine one. Believe me, there's a plethora of others. Why didn't they bring that up? They were stupid, they were gutless, there's lots of reasons. Why didn't the press bring that up? Well, I think why the press didn't bring it up goes to a myth in America about the press. The myth is that we have a ball-busting investigative press that's yeah. always going to be out there, it's exposing thing, and they say, look at Watergate, look what the press did. Woodward do. and Bernstein, typing, well, doing that, running you know, that down while everyone else was celebrating the inauguration. Well, I don't know what that your... tradition. I don't know what you're, you're right. Yeah. I don't know what your view of Watergate is, but... My view of Watergate is that it was one branch of the government against the other, and one branch of the government used the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, those, that guys worked, the CIA. those guys worked as hard as they could, uh, but they were spoon-fed and given a famous deep throat, yeah. uh, most of the legionary information. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Nixon was a major threat to the CIA, even to the FBI. He wanted to take the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, turn that into his own private combined CIA and FBI. Plus the Gordon Liddy wing. Right. Uh -huh. As an outsider, he didn't trust him. Put that all in the White House, take away a lot of their powers and their jurisdiction. That was a serious affront to the way things are done in Washington. Uh -huh. So there were people out to get Nixon, very responsible, established people in the government of the United States. I don't mean elected representatives. I mean people in, in the... In the classic network in the CIA and the Justice Department, police, FBI said, what is this guy doing? And they had plenty of reason to get him. And the Watergate thing that collapsed Nixon, you know, was really came out of people in the CIA who had a gripe against him. Anyway, that's our greatest example of investigative journalism. Yeah. And that was at least fed partially by, by one branch of the government against another. Yeah. And you name me another example of great investigative journalism that's going on really knock temples down this country. Yeah. They're pretty hard to find. Well, it's hard to knock temples down. very long and very timid. Yeah. Huh? You it's could almost make a case that Casey was deep throat. Huh? That the beginning uh, of the relationship between Woodward <coughs> and Casey began with the deep throat business mm -hmm. and went on to the book Veil, vale, yeah. which Woodward wrote about Casey, yeah, right. including the end of that book with the whisper that his wife denied. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. there's no doubt that Woodward had a relationship with Casey. It yes. was not the ordinary re relationship of a reporter to the head of the secret police, Yes, right. All right. of the international secret police. And I want to go back to what we were saying before, because the, the CIA has been criminally involved in drugs all the way back 
to the time that Chiang Kai-shek's armies were defeated. Uh -huh. When those armies had to be moved around and fed and paid, they were moved up into Burma under our essential leadership. And it was there that they started the big drug wars and started taking over Burmese drug plantations mm -hmm. and then moving out finally into the Golden Triangle, which we moved into. I mean, this is very shortened, foreshortened history. But again, in the early days of the Vietnam War, uh -huh. that was all a CIA operation. If you read any of these books about flyers and about the movement of drugs going back into the 50s, you have ex Navy and Army pilots, Army Air Force pilots working for the CIA, and this is run all the way through it. Uh -huh. Most of these pilots uh, were career officers who got out of it for money, for big money, and also for kicks. It was wild, dangerous, kind of yeah. wonderful yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's also kind of part of it. Of yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there is a case to be made, and this, and we're we're going back to Bush. And if I'm saying too much, you may kick my bad knee, Warren. Mm. Uh, Bush was a member of the most powerful college club in this country, Skull, Skull and Bones, Bones at yeah. Yale. Uh -huh. In the year 1948, the captain of the Yale football team was black. His name was Levi Jackson. He was one of the best football players in the history of the Ivy Leagues. It was customary in Skull and Bones that the captain of the football team at Yale became a member automatically of Skull and Bones. Bush drew a picture of a black guy as an ape. Uh, maybe that's not much, but yeah. it's a small thing in his, his long career. Jackson was an interesting young man. He rejected Skull and Bones without knowing any of this and chose another club to uh -huh. join, Scroll and Key. Uh -huh. But the idea that that kind of mysterious club could have uh, surfaced with a drawing of the football captain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't impeach a man for that. No, that's what I'm saying. You... No, but it's part of a long history. And you're going uh, to, with your book, be going through the history of George Bush's political career and so forth? You and his business career. And his business career. Well, it's and unfortunately you know, a history that wasn't told. Uh, usually in a presidential campaign. It all comes out, yeah. It all comes out. You know, yeah. right or wrong, make charges. That's what politicians do. Uh, the charges against, possible charges against Bush, and a lot of people in the country, it might have got more votes, for all I know. A lot mm -hmm. of people like the country. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people would say, well, you know, if the CIA's got it. But the fact that those things weren't brought out, that they were known, you know, so broadly. Uh, for instance, you know, one of the, the things that's often been, been discussed in the presidential campaign more than anything, but it made very little bit of the papers, was the rumor that the Republican Party in 1980, the first Reagan-Bush campaign, uh, cut a deal with the Iranians who were holding the American hostages to, hold off, to yeah. release them. Uh -huh, yeah. Now, that's been a strong and powerful rumor. It was, began with Iranians and their memoirs and it went Benny on. Benny Sadr has contributed to understanding he, he, things that way. Yeah. He said that's absolutely been the case, the former president mm -hmm. there. Uh, anyway, that stayed out of me. But it became such a, a, a stable of call in shows in this country and mm -hmm. talk shows. I mean, the word got around, and people, you know, more and more discussed that and more and more believed that. And that was another thing except that. Except the newspapers again. Except the, the newspapers. That just would. It just was something they just didn't want to tear into. Barbara Honecker contributed to that? Yeah, Barbara Honecker was one of the prime uh, advocates of, of that theory. Now, again, you know, whether that happened or not, now, Barbara suggests that there was a meeting in Paris and Bush was there and they cut this deal before the election. Well, that's a very, very serious charge because the hostages were held another two months or more. That's right, yeah. Uh, but again, it's a matter of having something other than circumstantial or rumored thing, it's another thing to have proof positive of some of well, these allegations. No, this isn't a matter of court. We're talking yeah. politics here. Yeah. Well, and, all right, all right. You know, and, and if the, uh, but I, I mean, the public you, Gary Hart had been involved in cutting a deal with people who were holding American citizens hostage, I can assure you that the press would have put its utmost resources to investigate. No, but what I'm saying As is that... As the press did against Carter. Yes, what I'm saying is that if they... It's one thing to say, if he was involved in cutting a deal and that was done and there was something that would absolutely prove that was the case, 
then, yeah, people would do it. But the perception was that there were allegations that that was the case, but the people making that allegation hadn't been sufficiently able to prove that that was the case, and so it went away as, uh, as a rumor that was not founded. But here is the people stuff, perception the public but here is the stuff that is proven. Well, I understand that. Proves. I understand that. I understand. Here's the right, stuff but that I'm that just is saying the, the public <coughs> perception. Yeah. Here's the stuff that is provable, though, on the other hand. We know that Carter made an approach to the Iranians and offer them $50 million of non-lethal aid. That was naive. The Iranians laughed that off because they knew the Iraq war was beginning mm -hmm. and they wanted weapons. And at this point, there are enough people involved like Bani Sadr, the president, who say, yes, there was a, a, an October surprise. There was a meeting in Paris at which Bush or his delegates attended and were in the Hotel Raphael and the Hotel Creon. And Rupp, allegedly a German pilot, flew Bush to Paris personally for this, personally for this meeting. Mm -hmm. And there are 18 hours in which Bush is, is absolutely missing from his own calendar. Mm -hmm. Where was he? The, it's, that, this is not proved. But on the other hand, assumptions can be made that he had to be somewhere in those 18 hours. Mm -hmm. And it, it can be proved that immediately after that, that under the, with the Israelis, with Nir, who died in that mysterious accident in Mexico three weeks ago, with Nir and other people, NIR, weapons were sent to the Ayatollah, substantial amounts of weapons. Yeah, that's true. And continued to be sent. And then when Reagan was inaugurated, the hostages were released. Yeah, right. And then the new administration began shipping in March, with Secretary Haig approving it, Hmm. Major shipments of Home arms yeah, right. to Iran, yeah. and you know the, the obvious question is: since at the time the president and the vice president were both saying these are terrorists, these are horrible people, we have arms embargoes against them, we hate them, even though they just released their hostages. Totally opposite to the public statements, yeah. they're shipping them major arms. That yeah. went on for two years. I understand. So you got to say, now what the hell is going on? Here? I understand that. But again, no, back, back, back to the perception of the fact, and uh, Mr. North supposedly uh, be the one who's going to carry the, uh, you know, the loose cannon. Uh, he's the one who was at fault, and uh, Mr. Poindexter and so forth. And uh, the president and the vice president were out of the loop, and they were. Away. Norton Poindexter. You know, you're trying to say that they Norton can be... Poindexter weren't born yet in mm. terms of what we're talking well, oh, about. Well. We're talking about 1981. They yeah. came on board about 1984 mm. when the congressional ban went in to say that we, the Congress won't allow you to ship any more... Oh, okay, right, 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 right. Well, yeah. I, mean, I meant in terms and, of... And the after country. 1984, there have been some hostages grabbed again by the Iranians. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about in 1980, everybody remembers all the hostages were held. Mm -hmm. It was during the Carter time, and Carter made an attempt at an aborted raid in yeah. the military. We all yeah. remember that history. Yeah. But then the co hostages were released on inauguration day. Mm -hmm. And why would the Reagan-Bush administration... After the hostages were released, when the Iranians were still terrorists, still the people had done a lot to us, Send why them. would they start shipping a massive shipments of arms when there were no hostages, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. there were no contracts? Because we, we had plenty of arms shipments to the country. Well, that's something we have to been, become an issue. This is something that we've been asking ourselves, and from the uh, with this kind of things that came out of the Iran Contra hearings and all that sort of thing, we've been trying to ask ourselves these things. But as we come up to now, it's Mr. North who is being indicted, and Mr. North who's going to be tried. It's not Mr. Bush, and it's not Mr. Reagan. It's Mr. North, and uh, is being put at that level, and it's not being able to make a connection higher up. You're suggesting that higher up connections of culpability for bills of impeachment or something culpable. You don't think some second-rate lieutenant colonel in the United States Marine Corps was pulling this off on his own, do you? Well, apparently the system, what I'm saying is the system now has it pegged that way. That's the way the system uh, is doing it, that Mr. Walsh just... Uh, well, yeah, but the system is what we're talking about. Yeah. Here. But the reason, the reason we're writing this book yes. is not to uh, put Bush in jail. We're raising the question, wait a minute, This, the material that we're developing in this book, which will be coming out um, the end of April, uh -huh. a short time after the inauguration of a new president, this is material that's going to stun everybody, but we're saying more stunning mm -hmm. is the fact that this material was known, was available. We're adding quite a bit to an independent investigation, but basically, all over the boards, 
It was there, buried in this congressional hearing. Little parts of it here bubbled up in the press, went away the next day. The press never got onto it. The Congress campaign had the information. They talked about it. They said it's too dangerous when it backfires on it. We better not bring it up. The extraordinary story is about opinion making in America, how politics are running, what the press does, that this material, which would have normally been an average thing in a presidential debate, yeah, right. yeah. never came up through the press or anybody, and you put it out in its breadth and its enormity. And we're yeah. not just talking about cocaine. We're talking about oil politics. Let's not forget that Bush was the person who went to, as vice president, went to Saudi Arabia and said, let's make a deal. Let's raise the price of oil hmm. so the American consumers have to pay more. Well, I didn't know about that. Now, that's, not, that's a very strange yeah. trip, is isn't it? it? See, yeah. even the enemy learns from history. Yeah. You brought up Watergate. Yeah. Watergate has to be in the mind of every Republican. It has to be in the mind of every executive branch of the government yeah. who's about to do anything. Yeah. And uh, this is precisely what happened with Reagan and Well, Bush. I guess what I was getting at, and so your book is going to come out and it's going to perhaps lead to something. Will it be, it, it, it would lead to activity or charges or something of that sort being brought against Mr. Bush. You said early on, the bills of impeachment. I mean, that's a serious thing to consider. It won't be just a political history of what went on. It intends to lead toward action and toward culminating... Well, that's the... I, I guess that's the dilemma. Do you dilemma. what I'm saying? That's the is, dilemma uh, of the title. Is uh, the dilemma... Knowing the all dilemma. this about Bush, would, would you want to, considering those are charges that could, are matters for impeachment? They certainly are. Or do you want him to resign? United States laws involved. Uh, do you want to have quail? Mm -hmm. I mean, it does a real, there's a real Well, dilemma. certainly you'll have, a, you'll have a lot of people who would say that would be a horrendous right. thing yeah, but, to but, contemplate. But more than that, I, I would trust that... I mean, uh, if it were a matter of public opinion... That exposure of a record like this of one guy's life, privileged life in the government that had not been examined in the most, the most serious crucible you can go into in American life, which is to run for president. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people don't like to get into politics mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. their private life, their financial yeah, life, everything else gets stripped over. Yeah. The opposite happened with George Bush. The opposite. Nobody even attempted to touch him, attempted to look into stuff it's on the press and on the part of the opposition party. And you've got to say, wait a minute. So hopefully the exposure of this whole record of material that was known in all the areas from the toleration of anti-Semitic politics within the Republican Party uh, to connivance with foreign powers to raise the price of oil to American citizens uh, to... El blatantly illegal activities in allowing drugs to be exchanged for guns right out of the vice president's office, and I submit there's ample evidence on that to shock everybody, which has been played down. But that's going to come out as some of these lawsuits, private lawsuits that are bubbling along. And when you've spread the whole pattern of activity out, you've got to go, what was going on in the United States Well, let me last ask you a question. You're we didn't debate that. Let me ask you that a question and so forth. You're concerned with these things. You were concerned with it. Why are you writing it now? Why didn't you write the book a year and a half ago or two years ago yourself? When this evidence was coming out and they said the press didn't do anything, why didn't you put the book together a year ago, two years ago, before the election? This is a book about what was known. Yeah, right, but you knew it. You knew what was coming out. You, you were no, part of the I investigative, didn't know. I didn't investigative know. reporting I didn't know community that didn't no, do what it was supposed to have done. Until the middle of last done. summer, and you I kept saying, wow. The New York wow. Times once in a, in a uh, review that praised yeah. one of my films called me a radical scavenger. Ah, uh -huh. And I think I'm probably, I probably, I can't speak for Warren, I probably am a radical scavenger <laughs> in the sense that I let the system reveal itself and then I worry about it and look at it and see what the revelation is and what does it lead to and do we really have to have this and do we do it again and how can it be used against the people who are in power once it's revealed you know you're not going to have another Watergate history does not repeat itself in the same form it repeats its, it, it makes new forms although the substantive aspect may be, re, be repeated uh -huh. you're not going to have a lot of loose cannons like Liddy and uh, and Dean and all of those people, you're going to have something quite different here. I mean, when Bush ran for the presidency himself in 1980, he was still Teflon. Nothing touched him. Uh -huh. And he'd been director of the CIA. He'd yeah. been the chairperson of the Republican National Committee. Yes. He'd been involved in scandals in the oil business. He had all kinds of other problems. These were never raised. I think this worried both of us, and before we even thought of doing this book, I mean, uh -huh. quite separately. Who the hell is this guy that, I mean, his life in the oil business, why, why didn't Benson bring it up? Benson knew about it. Benson beat him, after all, uh -huh. in, uh -huh. in the Senate race in Texas. Yeah. Uh, why didn't it come up? And 
I think the Democrats, myself, it's my own view, uh, because Warren and I are, see m most of this thing the same way, but not be, it's my own view that, that Dukakis didn't have it and the people around him were frightened. Uh, and there's no doubt that the people around Bush, the, the great myth that I think Bush himself hate, helped to propagate is that he was a wimp, that he was kind of a nice soft guy. He's a Wasp tough guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, He's a tough. tough guy. He's been around a long time. He's been a lot of people have died because of him. Well, okay, yeah. He sent them out there to die. Yeah, right. Well, you, are you, are you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you think it's going to be people who are going to say, well, you disagree with him at a political standpoint, you don't agree with his politics, and you're saying and making these allocations in a normal political way because you disagree with I'm the not man normal on anything. Right are you? <laughs> no, uh, but I mean, in a, in a certain sense, they'll be saying maybe the election's over, sour grapes, they're going to be doing this, and look, he's our president, we've got to get behind him, and, you know, history, and do you understand? Do you expect that there will be that kind of a reaction I, in view of the fact that so many people seem to just go along with well, the, the way things break, are happening? break windows, hmm. but I don't think that's the... And some wind. The, the, right. Mm -hmm. I think that's the point. The, the point here is not to say, hey... Uh, Let's, here's, a, here's a bunch of dirt to throw at Bush. Mm. The point here is to say, what happened to our system? Yeah. What happened, what happened to, to our opposition politics? What happened to our press when so much of the seeds of all this information were, was available during the presidential campaign and it didn't come out? What do you think? What, what, why you why has the it? Bush, mm -hmm. the, the Bush uh, Dan Rather thing? Yes. That was absolutely set up by Bush. That confrontation on yeah. the air, right? Well, because it wiped out Rather. Wiped out, rather asking questions about Iran. Yeah, right. It did. That's, That's it. what he was trying to bring up, and they wiped it out. Well, well mean, all right. That was if you consider, clever manipulation well, no, of the media. There's another example of phony media. Now, if you consider rather, you know, a leftist force, an independent force in the media, I remember Dan Rather best. Uh, you were talking about Libya before we went on the air as the cheerleader for the bombing of Libya. Mm. He thought that was hot potatoes that mm. we were bombing yeah, Libya. He was yeah. out there. And it, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. Very yeah. happy of that. I mean, well, Dan Rather is about a, as much a, a leftist critic or an independent critic of our government yeah. as uh, Genghis Khan. Well, the country has gone conservative. The country has gone conservative from where it was. People are conservative, supposedly. They have conservative values. And, uh... Well, the rich are conservative, as they always were, and the press keeps the rest of it away from, uh, from everybody else. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And the investigative reporting and the thing, sort of what thing... What investigative? Well, whatever there has been in the history of the United States and so forth, and that attitude and so forth has deteriorated. The last time we had investigative reporting history in the United States was when we had penny magazines in the uh, beginning of this century. Mm -hmm when Collier's and McClure's and all those muckraking magazines flourished, and they were eventually put out of business uh, by the trusts who took over their banks and things like that and their paper and stopped them because they were going too far. And there hasn't been any investigative reporting as such in the United States since. And, and, and you, that's had, you had individuals like Lincoln Steffens. You, who you, worked for those magazines. Who he worked for those magazines, but he continued on. Uh, Far into it, to the end of his life. It's one of the myths of America that are you for your for your book that you're doing and so forth, and with the, where you see it might possibly lead and so forth, which would be an incredible thing if there were to be these bills brought against Mr. B Bush. Are, are you are you are you having? Uh, don't want to betray anything. Are you getting sources of information that have not been uh, publicly available to people in general? Every or day, every not? time you make a phone call to check out some of the earlier information, somebody says, oh, yeah, that's true, and did you know about that? And you say, what? Hmm. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh -huh. But there's no, is laying out there, there's nobody there giving out things that hadn't been generally made available or that sort of thing. You're not getting well, somebody who's nobody giving Nobody wanted it to be yes. available until Inside. now. We are right. getting new material, uh -huh. totally new material. Right. Uh -huh. When you call to check out... An old story, mm -hmm. you know, was this true and then why did this come out? The same person that you say, yeah, well, that's true, but, oh, by the way, did you hear about when, you know, Bush was down in Texas and they cut this deal to have CIA agents bring information from the government so they could use it against a political opponent, which is a violation of all kinds of statutory laws in the United States? And you say, no, I hadn't heard about that. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, everybody knows that down here. It was, and you go, wow. And you go, you know, I mean, no, but the point of this is that nobody in any position of authority, be it press or the political opposition, went after or bothered to go after or tried to go after George Bush. Uh -huh. And as a result, we had a lopsided debate. Yeah. And I'm saying that a lot of things about George Bush that D or I find offensive, politically wrong. Other people might say that's hot potatoes. It's yeah. great he did yeah. that. He should have done that. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. I mean, yeah, this yeah. is a democracy, so you may... But you what you're going to be trying to get at... Right winger, if you want. You're going to try... Right. You're going to, it's not a matter of just political ideology. It's a matter of culpability and things that he would be answerable for, ultimately, that you'd want to try 
and uh, get at and bring out and uh, accumulate this information. I mean, it's well, quite... Well, let everybody was surprised about the George Bush that emerged during the campaign. He wasn't the wimp everybody thought he was. Well, yeah. I think people are going to be surprised by the George Bush that emerges as president. What do you see happening? Do you see seriously, you brought it up, uh, you know, do you see seriously uh, hearings? Do you see seriously the possibility of... Uh, Bill's impeachment, or do you see something no, like that I don't no. happening? So or what no. do you see? No, you don't. The state no. of Texas controls both houses of Congress, uh -huh. and that's Bush's states, and it controls them both on the Democratic side and on the Republican side. Mm -hmm. And I see the same reasoning that went into the Iran Contra hearing, saying, "Why dirty this thing up anymore? Where the country's in enough of a mess." Uh -huh. And also, uh, you know, there's a general conception that we don't want, you know, establishment conception that we don't want. Well, let's say we're going, to, we're going to have enough trouble, let's cut our deals with Bush. But if they found enough that was culpable, openly culpable, against laws that could be really understood and it was done right and so forth, wouldn't there have to be some sort of an answering for openly illegal things that were directly linked to him at some point? It wouldn't be a matter of uh, do we want to have uh, some sort of... Uh, charges brought or some sort of answerability by our president or well, something, but they would have to be let, because let of the force something. of law or something. Do you understand what I'm saying? If it was clearly that way, but you don't, it's not just a matter the of what's convenient. Well, not one word of this book has been written. Mm -hmm. And the publisher called uh, me two days ago and said, uh, Warren was, wasn't, he, he didn't, he said, uh, D, uh, there's a story in Publishers Weekly that's predicting that your book, you, the, the book you and Warren are doing, is going to be number two on the hardcover bestsellers list. How can they do that? How I said, how could that be? Yeah. He said, well, I know. That's what the story says. Yeah, they, they, probably they, can, uh, they can project these things. That there's a, might be that there's, a, there's an interest in this sort in of this thing. Subject. In, the, in this subject. Well, that's the possibility. They haven't, no one has seen a page of the book. We, has, we haven't written one page yet. Uh -huh. And it has, to be, it has to be turned in, finished, February 15, uh -huh. 1989. Uh -huh. And uh, you, what, do, you, do you see the upshot then not some sort of a, well, it would be a, a mass uh, understanding or an educational process, conscious raising process about the nature of the man who's running our country, but not leading to any kind of well, action that Well, I think the institutions that should seriously be impeached change. first are the press and the so-called opposition parties in the United States. I've for long felt that uh, they're really not opposition parties, that they think alike or crooked alike, sleep alike, and it's not much then it might be in the press. It might be in the press that would have to be well, brought. The, pr the press is, uh, there, is there a kept person? Uh, is there uh, elements of the press, uh, C-SPAN, uh, CNN, or any of the other alternate uh, press, uh, electronic well, press? Well, if the or, European and Canadian or, press pick or it up. Or the international press, who might be interested in embarrassing if that's the right term, the leader of the greatest, you know, the, the United States of America, there would be people who would in doing that. I mean, back again to the idea, it's not just a matter of what's convenient or politically convenient or what we would like to do, particularly with Mr. Quayle off on the sidelines and so forth. If the evidence and things came out, there would be questions that would have to, in some formal way, be answered. Did, did well, I don't, some I don't of these somebody would force in, that, to, in that hearings for formal hearing. Some of his nominees, because he's uh, recommended some very highly suspect people for positions in the government. Yeah. Depends how far the Democrats are willing to go. Well, will Greg be, uh, for instance, there's a very small one that'll pass by in the night, but Donald Gregg, uh, Bush met him when he was chief of station of the CIA in Seoul, South Korea. Uh -huh. Curious irony of history, Donald Gregg has just been appointed ambassador. Now, ambassador has to be confirmed Will the Senate say anything about this? The ex-CIA head of South Korea, who was personally re reporting to Bush all the time for a, over a long period of time, mm -hmm. is this? And the, ran the Contra arms for drugs. And out ran of and one of the people who ran the Contra, uh, the arms and drugs campaign out of Bush's office. What is your? What is, is there your, somebody who's going to say anything about this? Are we going to find somebody? I don't know. Do you find people in the government to carry, or do you find somebody in the government who would carry it, or people who would uh, push it, or people? Well, who Kerry's would do running it? for the presidency. There's well, no doubt I think about maybe that. Maybe that's true. But then, uh, but what I'm saying, do you know politically in and out and that, and what the political forces are? Could political forces be garnered where people who would want to well, political bring forces? To the fore? Politi politicians are hyenas. Are hyenas? You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, once they smell a little blood, they may they may a rush forward. Frenzy. And so can the press be so. And right? so can the press. Do you think the Bush could the, your book could set off a let's say the impetus toward increased investigation? Are there other colleagues of yours you've run into who are going down the same line? Or we have no colleagues, uh, but people who are, who are other investigative people or something who are doing similar kinds of things and pursuing the same kind of. Uh, 
uh, scent that you are, as it were, then, in this? Do you see? Or can you sense uh, the nation changing no, uh, from the rather complacent attitude that it has now of putting Mr. North on the line and taking the position that we're going to let history See, go? one thing we haven't talked about, there's a general malaise in this country that really has gone on since the Second World War. It's the last war we, we really won, except for Grenada, which mm. can hurt You know, Vietnam was a, a, a defeat. Mm -hmm. Korea, yes. Korea was a stalemate. Mm -hmm. The Bay of Pigs was a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, so anybody who waves the flag enough, this is what happens when that kind of malaise settles into a country. When anybody who waves the flag enough can be elected. Yeah. And anybody who, was, who questions a little bit or is timid won't be. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we're going to lay all of this out. We're not going to talk about the Korean War, World War II, but yeah. all of this, Bush's life goes back to that time. He was the youngest pilot in the Navy. Uh-huh in 1945. Yeah, right, right. That's not a wimp. Uh-huh. No, not at all, no. Well, I say it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting scene to see the book. We're looking forward to seeing the book and all the activity that will come out around it and the kind of things that might follow on. This is all done in relatively good time. Some people see an economic setback. Interesting times ahead. It'll be interesting to see if we could begin to recapture some of the, uh, you know, the better understanding of how we might all look at our society to try and make things uh, right. And I'm looking forward to seeing the book, that's for sure. I'd like to see it come out and help to be able to encourage whatever way the word could get out. We to have a great picture of Bush on the cover. You have a cover picture of Bush on the yeah. cover? You already have the cover picture. Are you going to have pictures in the book? And so forth? You know, you're putting it together now, actually. All the CIA agents. Oh, all the CIA. <laughs> okay, well, it's a pleasure. Sorry, we're running out of time. Names Even and pretty, numbers. Names and numbers. Well, it's your pleasure to have the perception. Warren Hinkle on my far left, and uh, uh, Neil uh, D'Antonio, or D, uh, as we uh, like to be called, writing a book that we'll all be looking forward to called The Bush Dilemma, which is going to be something that's going to bring a lot of these things into focus. I congratulate you on the research you've done, and uh, don't envy you the work writing task you have ahead of you to reach your deadline, but hope you meet it well and look forward to having the book come out. We'll take a transcript of the show. All right, right. very good. Your pleasure <laughs> to have those perceptions. Please do uh, tune in again next week. We'll be coming back in conversations next week. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for coming in. Best of work. Good luck on the book. We'll send you a book. Thank you. Good night. We'll see you next week.